Okay, here we are. So welcome everybody and uh, thanks for coming by. And we have, uh, this is a, the second part of a two part oil painting uh, demonstration that we started um, a week ago. And um, I'm going to get right into it because there's a lot that I wanna do and talk about and show. Um, so I, I will, my, my intro will be a lot shorter um, to give us more painting time. So that's, that's kind of the, uh, the goal here today. Um, if you are here for the first time and have not started this painting already, um, the last week's recording, you can always watch these recordings on uh, the YouTube channel that Michaels has set up. Um, uh, make it with Michaels. And it's, I think if you just go Michaels Art Stores, I, I forget the name of that YouTube channel. And Ash, if you know it, you can post that up there. Um, but the, um, the, the whole list of uh, different demos that we've, that we've put, uh, put together are on that YouTube channel. And all of them that we do here for, for, my, um, for my portion of the programming is, is up there as well. So just, uh, just hunt and peck around there and you'll find them. Okay, so let me get right into it. I'm gonna go and transfer us over to our uh, overhead view here. And this is what we have. So if you remember last time, um, uh, up, up in the corner there is uh, the photograph of the still life that I'm working from. Um, last week, this was pretty, pretty much monochromatic. There wasn't, uh, there was a little bit of, little bit of red, but I didn't have any of this blue. Um, I didn't really have these shadows quite as defined. Um, the definition here in the teapot and the cup over here uh, were not, uh, sorted out quite as as detailed as detailed as I've got them now. Um, so I worked on this probably about 40 minutes, maybe an hour longer after we met on uh, last week's session. So this is this is kind of a, a little bit more enhanced. I didn't really do much more than than just block this in and uh, you know, just sort of tidy up some of the, uh, the, the loose ends. Um, so uh, hopefully you, you're not too far behind the curve on this, um, but if you feel like you're, you're a little bit behind, um, don't worry, you can catch up and you can also sort of view these, like I said, on the archives and, and kind of pick up some of the, uh, maybe some of the lost things that I had uh, talked about during these two sessions. So anyway, here we are. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do right off the bat, um, I've got my colors laid out here. I've got black, I've got raw umber, I've got a primary red, you know, like a cadmium red or something like that. I've actually got two blues here, sort of a lighter, which is called a cerulean blue hue, and then an ultramarine blue. And then I've got my old trusty yellow ochre, and then of course, titanium white over here. Um, substitutes are perfectly fine for any of these colors, as long as they're sort of in the general ballpark. You got the three primers. I actually don't have a primary yellow here. I may put that in as I, as I, as I deem fit, but I, I think I'm pretty much gonna be uh, using, using this uh, little uh, palette of, of colors for, for the majority of things today. And I'll let you know if anything changes. Okay, so first thing that I like to do, especially after I've, you know, how did they have painting and especially with oil paintings and it's, it's dry and, and, you know, I've, I've got, I've got a lot of sort of moving parts here. I kind of look and, and, and go back to the beginning and I look for anything that is noticeably off. Um, and it, it's, it's almost kind of like I'm, I'm looking at the drawing rather than the painting aspect of it. Um, and the, and the thing that I noticed right off the bat is this, uh, teacup or teapot, I guess it is, is a little bit taller than it should be, and it should be a little bit wider. Um, that's a drawing issue that, frankly, I'm not going to address. <laughs> I'm going to let it just, I'm going to let it ride, um, because one, I don't have time for it. Uh, two, it's not really going to affect things too greatly. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a bigger gap in here than probably is in the, uh, the picture up here. So there's lots of little things. The one thing about this little teapot that, that bothers me to the point of I'm going to do something about it is 
is is the bottom. The bottom is is kind of off kilter. It's not quite um, it's not quite drawn right. So I'm just going to start with kind of a nice round brush here. Um, this is a size five on these these Artist Loft uh, sort of cheap brand uh, brushes, which have actually performed really well. Um, you don't have to spend uh, ten dollars on on an individual paintbrush in order for them to work well. As long as you keep good care of them, um, they should perform well for you over a fair amount of time if you're if you're careful. So I've got my medium right here, and this medium again is Winsor Newton's uh, liquid, and I've mixed it with a little bit of linseed oil. So it's probably about 60-40 in favor of um, in favor of the liquid. Because uh, I want it to dry a little bit quicker, but if you like the slower drying times, you can you can always kind of modify how much uh, of the uh, medium and how much of the of the linseed oil you put in, or you can just use um, either one. So it's really it's really kind of up to you. And all right, so I've got a little bit of medium in here, and I'm just going to go back kind of to my my beginning color uh, raw umber, and just treat it almost like like ink. I might need my glasses with this. Let's do it. And I'm just going to do a little drawing. And and this this little thing is my is my kind of bar for going over things and and holding my hands steady um, in case I have something kind of like this that I want to uh, manipulate. Although I'm going to use the edge of the table, I think primarily for that. So all I'm doing here is I'm just just going to try and tidy up this. This may not be a problem in your particular drawing. It is an issue in mine to the point where I feel like I need to do something about it. So, you know, this, this sort of beginning preliminary stage is really designed for you to kind of assess what, what looks wrong or looks right, and then kind of react and paint uh, based on that initial assessment. So if you see something um, that's, that's bothering you, that's off, that you kind of want to redraw, um, you can go ahead. And feel free, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but if you've got questions as you're going along, just uh, go ahead and ask them in the chat and we'll, we'll address those um, as we get free moments here. I'm also taking a little bit of white and, and just kind of blocking in uh, a little bit around where I've just made that mark. I'm a little bit happier with that, that shape. Um, so it's just, a, it's kind of a, an assessment stage right here. So that looks a lot better. It's already to me, to my eye, it's sitting down a little bit better. It's, you know, it's, it's sort of centered in that space. And I've got this, this white on here. So I'm looking for anything else that maybe um, needs my attention. Um, this is a little bit off, but I think I'll just leave it. Um, this comes, I may actually do the blue. Let's do some of the blue. I want to kind of work that blue a little bit more. So to get that blue, I just mixed, um, I just mixed a little bit of this uh, cerulean blue with the white. And just pop it over there. And I'll just mix up what's called a tint because I'm adding white to the base color. And I'm just going to kind of superimpose a little bit more of this, this cloth over, over top so it kind of comes over a little bit more. And then comes down like this. It's not the right color, but I'm just blocking it in here. I'll get the color sorted a little bit more. comes in like that and then comes down on the other side of this. This is actually, a, I think a close, this is kind of a grayish. Um, when you're blocking in, I, I, I'm always a, a sort of a big advocate of kind of making the color that you're blocking it in with, um, maybe a, a tiny bit lighter, a, a tiny bit less intense. So, um, that when you come back to it later, you can kind of enhance things and, and make it a, a little bit more vibrant. And, and you've also got this sort of base layer of a little bit more of a muted um, 
color hue to it. So I'm actually, since I'm here, I'm going to start blocking in these, these blue stripes here a little bit more. And there's kind of a nice um, gradation of, of the different blues that go through here. So there's one, there's one. And again, not being terribly exact with it. I'm just trying to get the, the general um, feel of the color, sort of get in the neighborhood. And then, you know, I can do my interior decorating later or painting the house or, you know, doing the, 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 the touches. Now I'm just kind of blocking it up, I'm framing it up, so to speak. A little bit more than I did last week because obviously um, I'm dealing with color here, but you know, as you progress through it, um, you kind of block things in in slightly more complex relationships, um, and then you refine it down to those um, more, you know, firm firm details uh, as you progress along here. All right, since we're dealing with more intense color. I'm going to, I'm going to sit aside. I'm actually going to sit this brush aside, get a little bit of the, uh, the blue off it, but I want to switch colors. So I'm going to uh, move over to a different brush. And just, just for kicks, I'm going to change up the brush. I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush. This is size two. This is a flat, but it's really not at this stage that important. I'm, I'm working on the, I'm going to work on the pepper here. Um, but I am not going to get too in, in, into details here. I'm just going to um, intensify that red a little bit. So I'm taking a little bit of this uh, brilliant red or cadmium red. Um, I think this one is called, it's a, this is the Artist Loft brand. Um, it's called Brilliant Red. So that's what I'm using right now for this. And it's, um, it's gonna work just fine for a nice big, pepper. And all I'm doing here is just putting a, a thin coat of the straight red over top of this. Um, and what that does is you may think, why are you doing that? Why you've already got it? It's already red. Well, it is, but a, another layer, another thin layer will add what's called intensity to it. So it gets, it gets more red, it gets more saturated. And it's, um, it's, it's just sort of building up depth and richness to the color. So just because you have a, a color down doesn't mean you can't put another layer on if you feel like it's a little bit too muted or too dull. So I'm just taking some of this and just blocking it in. You can, and you can see, let me, let me get a close up here. I love my little stand there. So you can see here, this is the part where I've added it. It's, it's getting much more interesting. It's getting much, much richer. And still just at, at, for the moment, um, just sticking with the redness of it. I'm not trying to, to do the shadows or anything like that. Or the little striations there, the little indentations in the actual pepper where it gets a little darker. Although I may do that next, we'll see. I like to move around. I like to get a lot of things up in the air, juggle a lot of plates. There we go. So we're just kind of popping that red out a little bit more. And since I'm here, I may as well, I've got a little kind of excess right over here, which I can fix really easily. Actually, I'll just go back to my blue because it's going to be blue. So I'll just take my blue, just kind of fill that in a little bit. There, repairs. See, it, it, oil painting does not have to be terribly intimidating. Just come right over top of it. Okay. All right. So I think what I'll do actually is I will I will come in here. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of Raw umber, oops. You're gonna take a little bit of raw umber here, or I am, and then mix it with that red. 
and just sort of I'm making what's called a shade of the red. So a darker version of that red. And I'm gonna start just blocking in a little bit of the, the variations. And this is painting, painting uh, wet into wet. So wet paint on top of wet paint. There's another one. This is another one. Let's get a little bit more paint. Let's see, where's another one? Over here. And, and remember, whenever you're working wet into wet, whatever color you're, you're working with is going to automatically mix with the color that you already that you already have down here. So in this case, red. So if you want it dark, you maybe go a little bit darker on the uh, on the color that you're adding. So this is giving me sort of a nice mid red. It's not terribly dark. It's not terribly light, but it's certainly darker than um, than the the base red color. And then along here, there's a little shadow edge. So I'm just gonna kind of incorporate that in. Mike, we do have a question. Um, yeah, someone has asked, what, yeah, what do you use to darken green? Darken green? Well, I mean, there, there's, there's a, a million and one ways to darken any color. Um, I always start, I mean, the simplest thing to do uh, a darkening with is just take, just take black. I could have taken some black instead of brown here, but I wanted to kind of keep it into a, a, a fairly warm, end of the palette, um, but green, you know, the root colors of green are blue and yellow, blue being the darker version of that. So if you wanted to kind of stick, um, stick with the, the, the root colors of, you know, whatever color you're darkening, in this case, green, blue is your, is your obvious choice, but black would also work. It really depends upon, um, you know, kind of your, your personal preference as to what is more appealing. Blue is probably going to give you uh, a slightly more interesting because uh, simply it just you know it's it's just more colorful than black is. Um, black can be a little bit um, monochromatic, you know, not monochromatic, but um, muted. Um, blue will give you sort of a little bit more of a vibrant um, feel to it. But blue's blue's the one that I would with with a green anyway. I would sort of uh, Go on that go on that road and see how that plays out. All right, so I'm going to actually add a little bit of black to this to make it even darker, in keeping with my idea here. So let's see. Yeah, just right along here. So just adding a little bit of variation now. Looking for those areas that are a little bit darker than when I used just brown. I could probably shift, um, just describe this edge a little bit here. I was gonna say something and I forgot what it was. Oh, well, it'll come back to me. All right, let's see. So we got the pepper blocked in. Let's take a wide view of that, see how that, that holds up. So I'm not, I'm not done with that pepper by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's, it's certainly more defined than it was when we started today. So another big area, so that, those, are, those are sort of two smaller areas um, that I've, I've been looking at here. Uh, these shadow areas, I want to, to really work those um, today too. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a bigger brush. Um, let's take this one here. So this is a round, this is a size six. Um, a flat would work for this as well. I may even go a little bit larger actually. And what I'm gonna do is all of these shadows here, I'm just gonna darken them a little bit and I'm also gonna put a little bit of blue in it because I feel like those shadows right now are, are just much too warm for what we got going on. So I'm just taking a little bit of, can you see my palette over there? Let me see. Yeah, okay, so you can see it. So I'm taking the medium. I'm gonna actually take a little bit of brown 
but I'm mostly going to concentrate on this darker red that I've got here, which is uh, ultramarine blue, which is a great blue. It sort of took the place. It's sort of the, the chemical replacement for uh, an old pigment called lapis, lapis lazuli, which was a ground up. Uh, if you've ever, if you're a jeweler or you know, deal with semi-precious stones, you'll know that lapis is a semi-precious stone. Um, and obviously that costs a lot of money. So they came up with this, uh, essentially a synthetic version and ultramarine blue is the replacement for that. Historical color fact for you, do with that what you will. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm just getting along the edges here and making this dark. I'm kind of dripping it into the, to the blue of the cloth, but it being oils, I don't have to worry too much about that because I can always wipe it away later on. Do you want to, oh, let's see, I put it on top. Watch where you put your hands. Normally I would work upright on, a, uh, on an easel, um, but it's better for you to see at an angle like this. So I'm kind of working a little bit in a funky way for my personal preference, but we learn as we go, don't we? Okay. So lots, lots of blue, a little bit of the umber. And just trying to darken things up and cool things down. Cool colors um, tend to tend to retreat move back in space, um, as do dark colors. So a dark, cool color will retreat even more. So you can see I've, I've kind of got a, you know, this has just moved back in space a little bit more than these shadows. So we're getting a little bit more depth. We're getting a little bit more, um, you know, value. Uh, it's, it's the, the values are getting a little bit more wi wider apart. The lights are getting lighter, the darks are getting darker kind of thing. All right, so I'm gonna take the same, the same basic color. And I'm actually just gonna use for the shadows in the, uh, in the cloth, I'm just gonna use straight blue. And straight blue is on this one is basically a mix between blue and the brown that I already have on here. So this is, this is a fairly thin coat of this. Uh, you know, again, one, I think one of the things that a lot of people who are new to oils and new to painting in general is they feel like they have to mix up exactly the color that's here. It has to be this sort of gray, uh, you know, sort of mid gray. And how do I mix that exactly? Well, if you start with the general value of it, you know, the dark or the light of it, get that right. Even if it's a warm color like this brown, um, you can always change that with what's called a glaze. And this is a blue glaze that I'm just putting over this, this overly dark cloth shadow, but not too dark. I mean, it's more, it's more kind of a, of a sort of a mid to dark gray, but I'm just trying to unify these shadows with a little bit more coolness to them. Blue being a very cool color and cool as in not warm, doesn't have red, doesn't have yellow. So this is this is probably, you know, the the biggest area that I'll be working on today. And, you know, kind of overall, there's a lot of this shadow here, and you notice I'm kind of keeping this. Uh, spout of the of the kettle uh, I'm keeping that not blue for the moment because it is a little bit of a color difference 
And so I want to keep, keep that separate from this to a degree. I mean, I may eventually um, put blue in here, but for the time being, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it a little bit separate. And then I'm just going to come in here in between all these little areas here. This brush is probably reaching the end of its usefulness because of the size difference here, but it's still working. Okay, we have a good question here. Um, to make the glaze, do you mix oil or thinner with the blue? Um, with glazes, it's much better to use medium. Um, so like the liquid or straight linseed, uh, linseed oil or a mix of both like I'm using. I'm using about a 60-40 about a mix. Um, and really it's just, it's just about how long you like the drying time to be. If you want it to be a little bit longer drying time, um, then just use uh, the uh, liquid. If you want it, or no, what did I say, longer? Longer, just the oil. If you want the drying time to end up being a little bit quicker, then use the um, then use the liquid. So it's really it's really kind of a, a, a personal preference. When I um, started working on this um, painting after I left you all last last week, um, about you know twenty minutes after I I uh, signed off the the kind of the working quality the, the the feel of the paint was perfect it was really nice it's slightly tacky but not sticky um, so the paint was really staying staying put I find sometimes that when you first put it on especially if you have maybe a little bit too much oil and and no medium uh, that it gets a little slippery kind of it's, it's like squirrely kind of going across the, uh, the surface um, of your, and especially for something like, like me, I was using a panel. Um, it's, it, tends to, it tends to move around, the paint tends to uh, not stick to the board terribly well, but after an hour or so, it, it tends to firm up and, and get a little bit more sticky and a little bit more cooperative, I guess would be a way to describe it. User friendly. All right, I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush here because I'm in these more intricate little areas and I'll just move, I'm just gonna to move to a pretty small one. So this is a number two again and still the same color, the straight blue here. A little bit of medium if you want. Um, oftentimes you won't need medium. So it's really just kind of a feel thing. But you can see if I use this brush for all of this, I'd still be up here, you know, pottering around here. So using the right brush, Getting the right size for the area that you're working. It's really one of those things that, you know, it pains me to see somebody working on like a, you know, four foot canvas with a brush like this. It's, oh, just use a bigger brush. The painting might be great, but you do want to finish it in your lifetime. So work, work with what gets you to where you want to go as quick as you can. All right, so I'm just, since I've got the small brush, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be uh, fairly strategic here and try and get that. So I'll reiterate this a little bit. That little initial drawing problem that I tried to sort out. Let's see, here's a, here's a bigger area. I'm just gonna use this bigger brush. There we go, oh, got a nice, 
there's a little hair stuck in there. I often will have like a pair of tweezers while I'm painting and it's for picking stuff out like that. It's causing me trouble. So I already had some blue in here and you can kind of see how this shadow looks a little bluer than you know a lot of these um, other ones. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, as light goes across the surface, um, it, it tends to change color and change value. Um, and it's, it's oftentimes very, really subtle. So, um, you know, that's your job as a painter is just kind of keep your eye on these, these, these real gradual, subtle transitions. It also makes the painting a little bit more interesting too, if you've got uh, kind of a variety a variety of would colors you, in in similar areas would you mind pointing your um camera a little little bit more towards the bottom of your work oh am i not getting that oh yeah we just so had a re that. yeah request oh yeah sorry about that thank you no worries i've got the bigger i've got the bigger photograph kind of over top of it so i don't see it always so yeah thanks just let me know if that happens again sorry about that okay yeah that's looking much better um, so I'm just going to keep going with this, doing what I want. I'm just going to add some more blue up here. And this blue you can see is reacting different. Since this was painted a little bit lighter than this background color, um, now we're getting a little separation between, you know, we're, we're definitely seeing a shadow on the blanket in front of that darker area. So that that legwork we did in the beginning of the painting where you know this was a little darker than this, that's starting to pay some dividends. So you know the more work you do in that, in that block in stage, it just makes it a lot easier to get where you wanna go later on in the painting. You can, I mean, you can make the block in stage as short as you want or as long as you want. Um, it's just really how uh, involved you wanna be as you progress through the painting. I, I mean, I, I like to get a lot of things kind of lined up so that when I come in with, you know, sort of more detailed stuff, I've got a lot of the, the preliminary uh, issues kind of lined up. All right, and I'm letting the blue kind of get into the white a little bit because you know if you if you look uh, sort of on the photograph like if you look up in this on, on this little corner here you can see how this is not it's not a straight you know shaft of dark paint here there's a little transition zone right here so allowing that allowing that blue to kind of interact with both the dark and the light you get that transition so that's a nice a nice way to, to kind of use the glazing to, to blend something in uh, that needs a little bit more subtlety to it. I'm getting a little bit sloppy here. There we go. Um, and if I do want to get some of that off, I can just take my rag, just kind of clean it up a little bit or make it messier depending upon. Yeah, it's better. Okay, and now we're gonna do this big one here. Actually, I think I'll take this bigger brush just to get it started. I'm really gonna just pull it up. And then this is where these pointy brushes can come in handy. I kind of ran out of paint there. Um, but as you get from you know a thick area down here to the thinner area up here, you can just, sort of drag it less and you get, you know, less paint getting carried up there. And it's a sort of a thinner thing. So that looks really sloppy, but I will kind of tidy things up a little bit. There we go. 
Anybody encountering any issues? Any questions out there as we move along here? Let me know. All right, so that's a, that's a much better um, color. And if I wanted to make this darker, and I'll just do this in a, in a one little spot, like this, this shadow right here is really dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my big brush here, um, get a tiny bit of medium, maybe put a little bit of this blue on here, but also take some of this black. So you can see the kind of the degrees of darkness as, as we move along here. So this becomes even a darker um, shadow. I'll just pretend this is kind of like the edge of the blanket. Um, and this is just pitch black through here. Using a little less medium, a little bit more, um, a little more paint. That will tend to make the paint layer that I put on a little bit more, a little heavier, a little bit more opaque. Um, and I can do this, you know, I can do this up here. Just add these sort of dark little, and these are the, you know, these are the kind of touches that, that give, you know, that, you know, your average viewer will go, oh, that looks really nice. And they won't know why, but it's because you have sort of this, um, this degree of transition from middle dark, really dark gray, and then to black, something like that. And it's because of that depth of value that you really start to see kind of the roundness of it. So I'm, I'm just pulling in uh, a few spots here. So this, this little bit here, you can see this is where that fold really gets deep right there. So it's just adding a nice little transition. And I'll just do it for little bits here. And then if I look in here, I can see, um, yeah, just a little bit of right against So it's just adding a degree of, of depth to things. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. All Here right, Mike, we've got another question. Great. How do I get a back reflection or secondary one? A secondary reflection. Ooh, I like it. I don't know if I don't know if I can reveal that secret in a, this is technically a beginning level. But that's a great question. So what a secondary, um, a, are you calling it a secondary re, uh, reflection or a secondary shadow? What, what, what is the uh, description of it? Um, they're saying a, it says, how do I get a back reflection or secondary one? And then they said fruit. So I'm thinking on the fruit maybe? On the fruit, okay. Um, well, I'm just, I'm just looking at this cup here. As a, as a fairly good example of how that works. Let me just have a look here. Because um, if you look, if you look at the cup, there's, 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 if you look right below the handle right there, that's what I would call a secondary highlight. So in other words, what a secondary highlight is or, or a, a reflected, you know, reflected shadow or, you know, there's lots of different things you can call it, but it's basically the light coming down, bouncing off something else and lighting up an area that should otherwise be dark. So right in here, in this particular case, you can see I've, I've uh, put that in there. So I think what you're talking about here is if you look at this pepper and you see over here on the, uh, on the pot, there's a little red in there. Let, let me just go ahead and do that. I'm not really kind of equipped to be perfectly right with this, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. So let me just start. And tell me if this is what you had in mind or not. So let me look. I got to make sure I'm doing this right. So I'm looking at I'm looking at this, and there's definitely some highlights over here, um, and it looks like there's a little bit more of a shadow here. So I'm just going to take sort of a, a a very light glaze, a little bit of blue, uh, maybe a little bit of brown over here, and I'm just going to darken this. Um, the whole thing, I'll just do the whole thing. So nothing terribly dramatic or terribly precise, but it sort of hints at 
there being a little bit of a shadow being cast across this, which there is, but because this is such a reflective uh, object, it's, it's not terribly noticeable. So I've, I've kind of been a little bit obvious with it. Doing a little black in there for maybe a degree of depth to it. So I think what you're asking is in, term, in terms of kind of a secondary shadow or highlight or, or however you want to describe it, there's lots of ways to describe it. This red here from the pepper is reflected in this, uh, this iron kettle or whatever it is, copper kettle. And so what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to take a little bit of red with this little brush here. I'm just taking a little bit of that. Not, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a ton of paint. Like I'm not scooping it up. It's not cake frosting or anything like that. It's just a little bit, maybe a, a, a touch of medium if you feel like you need a little more transparency. And so this, the light's bouncing down and it's reflecting over here. And this very reflective surface is kind of picking some of that red up. So it's doing kind of a little effect like that. And if you look at the photograph and you look at here, you know, that's something that maybe if you were just painting this maybe out of your imagination or, you know, uh, I don't know, just a, a bad copy or something. You might, this might be something you don't see, but it's there. And it's, it's one of those kind of really interesting optical um, phenomena that, that happens uh, around reflective surfaces, something that's got a really strong sense of light as this, uh, as this does. Um, you're getting that bounce on there. So I think that's what you meant. If the person who asked that question can kind of maybe chime in again, uh, that's the way I'm reading your question. Uh, does that make sense? Hopefully she's still it awake after sense. that. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Um, no yeah. response yet from the person who asked it, but um, okay. yeah, I think that I think that might be what they were uh, going for. And yeah, and 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 if you look in here, really you can. Oh yeah, they said yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, because you can see it all, especially on this object here. You can see this white here getting reflected in, underneath here. Um, you know, there's all sorts of, of really kind of complex reflections happening in this object because it is so reflective. Um, and you know, that that that's this is the this is the hardest part of this painting right here, is because you've got so much of this subtlety happening in here. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to, how much of this I'm going to get to it, but that's kind of the idea of, of how this would be treated. You'd kind of be looking at the objects around it and determining, okay, there's going to be a little bit of a white reflection here because you got all this white on the, uh, on the cloth uh, here from the red, you know, maybe a little blue from this, although I don't see, oh, well, actually there is a little bit of blue if you look at it really closely. So there's lots of that going on in, uh, in a very, especially a very reflective surface. Um, okay, one thing that I do want to get into is let's get into this. I mean, I'm not going to be able to do everything, um, but I'm going to try and, and be as thorough as I can. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of cleaning this small number two round brush that's got a fair amount of blue on it because I want to go in here and do these little little arabesques and and little swirlies and stuff like that and, and do a little bit of detail. And really I'm gonna be fairly straightforward about this. I've already kind of drawn in, you know, I've drawn this in. It's not entirely correct, but it, it works for what we're doing. I, I would probably fix the drawing a little bit, um, but I wanna draw in these little blue, um, these little blue designs here. So let me just get a little bit closer here. So. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of that ultramarine blue and maybe mix it actually with a little bit of the cerulean blue hue just to kind of break up the monotony of the blues that I'm using. And I've got, I've got a, to start with anyway, a fair amount of medium. I rarely like to go in with kind of really heavy paint unless we're at the very end of, of a painting session. 
um, which, which I may do here at the beginning or at the end, not the beginning. Um, I may even go a little, I'm gonna go a little bit smaller with my brush. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna upgrade, I'm gonna upgrade to this Vienna. Uh, this is a Artist Loft brand number four. Um, it's got kind of a nice, uh, the fibers are a little bit more high quality. Um, and I think it'll give me a slightly better point. So I'm going to try this one. Well, it looks like I did not quite clean it well enough. Naughty me. Oh, there it goes. Just needed a little coaxing. So I'm going to put a fair amount of medium on here, mix it up with my blues. There we go. And because this, br this brush is, is really um, fairly soft. I'm just going to start drawing up on these little designs here and being, well, maybe let's get even closer. Mike, is this the last um, class in this series for this painting? Uh, yes, we will not be working on this painting again um, unless, unless I have something that. Um, you know, sort of finishing up loose ends kind of approach. Gotcha. Um, but again, everyone, you can find these on the um, Michael's YouTube channel, as yep. well as at michaels.com. And I'll pop those links again in the chat. And what, and what I'm trying to do with this, I mean, obviously, we're not going to finish this today, but I'm trying to give you sort of a little bit of a, uh, an introduction into a lot of different things that we would approach here. I mean, you know, I, I could make this entire demonstration about how to decorate a, a tea kettle um, in, in oil paints. So I'm just trying to move around and give you a, a, fair, um, a fair amount of information to kind of work with. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be, I would, I could probably even get away with a, a smaller brush, but I don't really have one. So I'm gonna have to use this. And the key here when doing this fine work is getting the right amount of paint and the right around amount of medium on here so that you're not, you know, coming in with big gobs of paint and, and really making a mess of things. Uh, really try and, and just sort of take your time. And you don't have to go full bore with the exact right color. You can always come back with another layer of paint that um, you know, sort of adds an, inten an intensity. And if you were to, you know, if you were to do a close up of this on that photograph that's up in the corner, um, you'd probably see sort of a variety of, of tones of blue. Um, there's a, you know, there's a kind of a lot of different shapes. You know, some of them have multiple petals, like right there. Um, you know, others are. I'm not going to do the little um, branches because I don't really have the right brush. I would need a really small brush. Um, oh, actually, I do have a really small brush. It was hiding. So I'm going to go to use this one. So this is the number one. I got the color mixed up. Oh, yeah. It's going to be so much easier. So now I can do kind of, you know, sort of connect the dots type thing. And you'll, you know, you, just, you saw me kind of, you know, taking a dry run like that. Um, there's, there's no rule that says when you got paint on it, you, you have to actually paint. You can kind of get a, a feel for where it goes. I'm kind of making, I, when, I, when I paint stuff like this, I, I don't feel beholden to be exactly the way the person who, who painted this, who painted this little pot. You know, I'm not gonna draw every little petal precisely the way they did and kind of make up your own pattern, which is what I'm doing. And the great thing about this is because I've already done the value. So when I put in, you know, a flower here, it's automatically darker. So it's already sort of built into the shadow. So I don't have to make it darker blue necessarily. It's already, um, because I'm painting fairly thin, it's already reading as darker because um, it's, it's essentially a glaze over a darker surface. 
if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense to me, but doesn't to you. And these little branches here are a slightly different color, but I'm not gonna be too worried about it. I'm just trying to give you the, uh, the general gist of things here. Pull in some of the darker blue. Let's see what else we got up here. So, you know, the, the, the key to something like this, once again, is really just getting the right concentration of uh, paint on here. So it's not too thick, it's not too heavy, it's not too opaque. Um, you're, you're letting so, like sort of the transparency of the paint work for you. It's kind of slightly making it up as I go along, but it's looking all right. Yeah, th this brush is much better. Those other ones were just a slightly, a, a little bit unwieldy, um, a little bit too big. Perfectly fine if I'm working in a bigger area, but when you get into stuff like this, it can get a little bit um, tricky. So I could go on, on and on with this. What I, another thing I wanna show you here is I'm gonna take the same brush and there's kind of a nice, um, nice shadow right along here. So I'm, I'm really gonna highlight this. So I added a little bit of umber, raw umber and blue. And this is the one where you, you hold your breath and then you <sighs> exhale and you get it right. So just sort of defining that little, this is the, the lid of the teapot. Short and stout. All right, does that look right? Looks a little bit off. So this is where, you know, that, that thing that I started with today, getting the, getting the drawing right down here, is like, this is where you start to see, when you start to sort of firm these up, it's like, oh, that was drawn not very well, or it looks a little funny. I think, I think that actually looks all right. It looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna go into the, to the mouth of the uh, spout here. Just add another layer of darkness. Give it a little bit more depth. Let's see what else. Maybe add a little detail, like, like the top here has got a little bit of a shadow on the one side of this dark little cap. Let's see, anything else? Just come in here, just really sit that down. There's always, usually right up against an object as it sits down in space, there's usually a slightly darker little edge and that's what I'm kind of paying attention to right now, where it sits down in this case on, the on top of that cloth. One fifty six, right here. Let's see here. Add a little bit of dark in here. See what else we got. There's a little bit of a darker shadow down here. Okay, I'm gonna widen it out and see how it looks. 
Ooh, that looks like a pretty good teapot. Sorry, I'm tooting my own horn there. I'm just happy with how it turned out. Let's go a little bit wider. There we go. Yeah, it's sitting down pretty well. And so, you know, the progression of all of this would be to just sort of, I, I've, I've essentially shown you all the things that I would do at different stages of this. And now it's just a matter of, like I would go in, go in here and put these little, there's actually little birds on that cloth in the picture up there. Um, you know, I'd probably do a little bit more darkening along these, these real tight edges where an object is sitting, sitting down on the cloth. Um, I'd go in here. I haven't even uh, addressed any of this here. This is actually something I spent a fair amount of time on last time. So there's not, not a ton to do in here, but you know, there's, there's, definitely, there's definitely some details that I, I, I could go into. Some highlights in here. I'll just throw that in really quick because we're, we're right at the end. And then I think I'll, I'll have a look and see what people are doing. Maybe get some spotlights of things. So let me just throw in a few strong highlights here. Um, now this is this is just straight white, warmed up slightly with some yellow ochre. You don't have to do that, um, but I always like to kind of hedge my bets that anything that's a really strong highlight is going to be a, a little bit warmer. So this is definitely going to be grabbing a little bit of light. Let me just move that over so I can see it. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I put that white, it should have been down here. But I can always do that. Gave a little bit of a misty cloud to it. Let's see what else we got some strong highlights. Um, pepper, pepper's got some strong highlights. This pepper is by no stretch of the imagination done, um, but I, I'm just, just giving it a little bit more uh, resolution. And you can see as I'm moving around here, this is getting more red. These highlights are getting more red which is not a bad thing because there is, you know, I think the strongest highlight is probably this one and that's the one I started with. So that's, you know, that's something you can do. You can kind of strategically uh, put in, you know, this is my brightest highlight, boom, that's where I'm gonna start. And then as I move around, it's gonna be a little bit less because it's, it's slowly mixing with that red paint that's already on there. Um, and then, you know, for something like the cloth, which is really subtle, um, this is where I would use uh, kind of more heavy paint, uh, like maybe right up top here, it's getting a little bit um, more of a highlight. And so you can you kind of start to get a hint of some of these highlights uh, being a little bit stronger in different areas. All right, should we have a look and see what other people are up to? Yep, maybe. I'll go ahead and um, change the spotlight if you're holding up your painting and we'll go ahead and everybody can check everyone's workout. Yeah, if you like. Look. Yeah, if you want to just raise your little emoji hand up there. Um, oh, yeah, nice. Henrietta, that's awesome. It's a lot of nice. You worked on this a little bit uh, outside of our demos, it looks like. This looks great. Yeah, really nice. Excellent. And then Patty, Patty working like a demon on the drawing. That looks great. Okay, and John, oh, John's got some fruit in a squirt bottle there. Nice value range. Good work. Nice set, a nice choice for a background color, sort of a nice bright, but, but darker, cooler green. Yeah, Cindy, excellent. That looks really nice. You're starting to get a little bit more elaborate in the uh, tea kettle up there. That looks really good. Yeah, and some of that. And Carol, nice, nice, still 
plugging away on the underpainting, that's great. The more time you spend there, uh, it just gets a little easier when you start adding all the, the color and intricacy to it. Nice. Let's see who else we got. Denise. Denise. Oh, that's doing something strange. It's like fading into the background. I think it's because it's like a blue screen kind of thing. <laughs> the pepper looks great. That's about what I can see. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's better. Yeah, there you go. Just sort of just emerging out of that underpainting stage. Nice. That's great. Anybody else beyond Denise? Um, I don't see any. Oh, there you go. Luke Smith says he raised his hand. All right. You want to show yours there, Luke? Or maybe he just raised his hand. Well, everybody's got their like background screen on. Yeah. Oh, oh. I think Ed also. Oh. Has him. Oh, there we go. And oh, okay. Oh, nice. I'm assuming your name is not Ed, but that looks great. Very nice. The values are really good on that. That's you get the values right. Um, you're three quarters of the way home in, in my book. Anyway, values are really important to get right. And, and you're doing a great job on that. That looks excellent. Nicely done. And safety first. You got your gloves on. Good job. All right. Well, folks, there it goes. That was, uh, that was, we got a lot done in two days, um, two hours. I mean, I cheated a little bit. I got a little bit extra, um, but here, let's just, uh, let's just look at it one more time. Yeah. So, I mean, this is definitely something that I could work more on, more on, especially more on the, uh, the highlights here, sort of differentiating from sort of a more light, white to a real strong highlighted white on the cloth and just sort of give you a little bit more of that that sparkle of the light hitting it um but we're we're well on our way to, to getting a lot of uh of that more intricate stuff uh ironed out so excellent work thank you all very much um next week is um we're into october and we're going to start a, a session a whole month's worth of uh gouache paintings gouache if you hear gouache, you go, what the heck is gouache? Gouache is basically watercolors, but with slightly different properties. So if you like watercolor, you'll love gouache. Um, it's, it's got a little bit more opacity to it, so you can do some heavier passages, um, but we'll be starting that next week. There will be one that's mixed in um, in the middle of the month that is a pay one. It's, I think they're charging 20 bucks or whatever, but it's designed to be a little bit more advanced, uh, get a little bit more uh, intricate with some of the techniques um, so keep your eye out for that. And I hope to see you next week for next, yeah, next week and next month for uh, gouache painting. Okay. Thanks Great. folks. Thanks everybody. Great work. We'll see you next time.